Thank you very much. I just want to say that we have a new record stock market. We just hit another record today. That's about 119 days out of the administration. That means not only uh, 401ks and everybody making a lot of money, but it means a lot of jobs. And I know that doesn't mean much to you people, but it used to be important. If you remember, the, it's all about the uh, economy, stupid. But you don't think about that too much. But uh, I do. I think about it all the time. So we just hit another record. And it's a big record. The market's up, I guess, over 300 points today. And the economy's doing well throughout the world. The economies aren't doing well, which is actually a drag on us. And despite that, we're hitting new records. Uh, Asia is doing very poorly. Uh, China is not doing well. Uh, our deal is going along fine with China. Uh, we're just concluded the deal with Japan, South Korea. Great trade deals from terrible deals to good deals. A lot of very positive things are happening. And go ahead, John. Mr. President, do you believe that Democrats in the House will vote to impeach you? And what effect do you think that will have in your campaign next year? Well, I can't believe they'd impeach. You have the greatest economy in the history of our country. You have the highest stock market in the history of our country. You have the best employment numbers and unemployment numbers in the history of our country. Uh, today, we have almost 160 million people working. We've never been close. And this, they have the best employment numbers and the best unemployment numbers. Uh, black unemployment hit another record. Uh, it's another record. Uh, if you look at Asian, if you look at Hispanic, in fact, uh, African-American unemployment just hit a number that nobody ever thought was even possible. Uh, the numbers are so good. So when you talk about the impeachment hoax, it's a hoax because the letter was perfect. What wasn't perfect is and all you have to do is take a look at the letter, which is transcribed. They transcribed what happened on a very good phone conversation. A per I call it a perfect conversation because it was totally appropriate, very good, and everybody saying it. Anybody that reads that letter, which is basically what happened on that conversation with the president of Ukraine, now go a step further. The president of Ukraine said, he didn't even know what anybody was talking about. It was a very fine conversation. Uh, the foreign minister said there was absolutely no pressure. The president said the same thing. The Democrats are crazed. They're lunatics. In the meantime, we have the greatest economy ever. We have a uh, man on the other side, uh, Adam Schiff, who's a corrupt politician, as you know. He's a corrupt politician. He made up a speech and he read what I said, and it wasn't what I said. It was a terrible thing he said. And many people saw that. That's how this whole thing, he started it as a con. The whistleblower, we got to find out about the whistleblower, because what he said has no relationship to what took place on my very good phone conversation with the president of Ukraine. So with all, with all of this that's happening, I think the Republicans have been amazing. We had. 195 or 196 to nothing. We have tremendous support from the Senate. We have tremendous support from the House. We even had Democrats go over to the Republican side yesterday in the House to vote because they said, this is not a impeachable. This isn't impeachable. That's supposed to be high crimes and misdemeanors. I'll tell you, in my opinion, except that he has immunity, which he shouldn't have, Adam Schiff created a high crime and a misdemeanor when he gave a false reading of what I said purposely. So we have to find out why did the whistleblower give a false account? We have to find out what happened with Adam Schiff and the whistleblower. I have to say we've had tremendous support. We have great poll numbers. We have more energy now. The evangelical leaders came in, as you probably know, four days ago, they said, that the evangelical Christians and other faith-based organizations, churches, temples, synagogues, no matter what you look, they've never seen it so unified. They've never seen it so energized. And they came in, we had 28 leaders come in. They said they've never seen energy like they have. So the impeachment thing is a hoax. Now, whether or not they try pulling it off, uh, it would be a disgrace. I, I think it would be. You can't impeach a president who did nothing wrong. You can't impeach a president 
that has the greatest economy in the history of our nation. You can't impeach a president that has unemployment numbers historic. Never have so many people been working, both employment and unemployment, who's rebuilt our military, who's taken care of our vets with choice and accountability. Nobody thought those things could be passed. So I think we've done more than any administration in history in its first two and a half years. Mr. President, 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 what do you say to the White House officials that did testify that your phone call was not perfect, that they were concerned about what they heard on that phone call? Well, all they have to do is read the transcript. Now, the gentleman that came in yesterday, Morrison, uh, he was terrific. He was supposed to be their primary witness. He was terrific. And he said he didn't see anything wrong with it. And by the way, I have a lot of never Trumpers that have been in different positions for a long time. Don't forget, I beat the Bush dynasty. I beat the Clinton dynasty. And I beat Obama and all of his people. And I come to Washington and a lot of thousands of these people, tens of thousands are working. Uh, but when you read that transcript, it all goes away because that transcript was totally appropriate. Say it. Are you leaving New York in part because of the court case scenario? No, I, they haven't treated me uh, properly. I pay millions of taxes, millions and millions of dollars in New York, and they've never treated me, you know, uh, since I became president. They just haven't treated, I think, the office with the kind of respect. And I don't mind paying the taxes. New York is a very expensive place to live. But many bad things are happening in New York, and I just put out a statement on New York, so I think you probably get Did you get it? I just put out a statement in New York, so I think it's pretty complete. Mr. President, sir, on your cooperation, sir, are you really willing, are you really willing to sit out the biggest fight of your political life by not cooperating in this inquiry? You're not well, I think I am cooperating, because you know what? I'm in front of you. Now you have Shifty Schiff, who said, let, let me just tell you, you have a corrupt politician leading this thing. He lies, he leaks, he's done so many things that are corrupt. It's lucky he's got immunity, and he shouldn't have immunity. He made up a statement that I, that he said I said, and I didn't say it. And it was only people, when they went back and looked at the, at the transcript, they said it was perfect. He's a corrupt politician. Nancy Pelosi, she should spend more time working on her district, which is going to hell. What's happening in San Francisco is sad. You look at the homeless population, you look at the problems. But Nancy Pelosi should go back to her district because she has totally lost control of her house. And I'll tell you what, you're going to have many more Democrats come on our side. So President Erdogan wants to uh, come to the White House. We have a very good relationship. The ceasefire has held very nicely. Uh, we've kept the oil. We stayed back and kept the oil. Other people can patrol the border of Syria, frankly, and Turkey. Let them. They've been fighting for a thousand years. Let them do the border. We don't want to do that. We want to bring our soldiers home. But we did leave soldiers because we're keeping the oil. I like oil. We're keeping the oil. And we're working with the Kurds. And we're, frankly, working with Turkey. And we're working with a lot of countries. We had a tremendous victory the other day in getting the number one terrorist in the world and probably one of the number one, maybe the number one terrorist for the last 50 years. And we knocked him out. And then we knocked out number two. And we already have number three in our sights. I'm going right now to a great place. And we're going to a wonderful, totally sold out big deal. And we're going to have a wonderful governor elected in a fabulous state. You know what the state is? Mississippi. What about, sir, what about considering replacing your chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney? You know, I have a very good relationship with Mick. I have a very good, I like Mick Mulvaney. I have a very good relationship with him. What about DHS, sir? DHS well, I have a deputy, I, as you know, I put in a, I put in a very nice, right? I put in a very good man who's highly respected. And he's acting right now, and we'll see where that goes. And as you know, John, as you know, I like acting. I mean, a lot of people say act. I like acting. It gives you great, great flexibility. I just.
what, what, what is the status of the deal with China? Because we're hearing, well, we're we're hearing different things. And where might an alternative location to sign the deal be now that Santiago? Well, we're moving along with the deal with China. China wants to make the deal very much, and we have a good relationship, and we'll see what happens. I don't like to talk about deals until they happen, but we're making a lot of progress. Where? 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 Location, where? location to sign? Uh, looking at a different couple of locations. Like? It could even be in Iowa. <laughs> could be in Iowa. Mr. President, Mr. Try that one. You understand. Could be. I mean, it's something we are discussing. But we're discussing location. But I like to get deals done first. U.S. for sure, though, sir? I would do it in the U.S. You would do it in the U.S. And she would, too? He would, too. Okay, Mar-a-Lago, maybe? Uh, we're thinking about Iowa. We are in Iowa. We have to get a... I want to get the deal done first. But we're thinking about Iowa. You know why? Because it would be the largest order in history for farmers. So to me, Iowa makes sense. I love Iowa. It's a possibility. Mr. President, you said that the phone call was, was perfect. perfect. Now, now there will be public hearings. Do you feel that will help you? Are you glad? I think it helps us. Look, hearings? my poll numbers are very high. We've raised, as you know, record setting money, record. A number that People, I don't think people have ever seen it before. That's a poll uh, on the swing states when it comes to the impeachment word. It's an ugly word to me, a very ugly word. But when it comes to that word, we're way ahead on these. They don't want to do it. Democrats don't want to do it. And we're going to take over the House because of it. Now, if they want to keep going forward with this charade, uh, but that letter was perfect. That was highly appropriate and perfect. Hello, Chad. Okay, anybody no, else? Mr. 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 Go ahead. Sir. Uh, are you, is, Chad, is Chad Wolf going to be your new DHS secretary? Well, he's right now acting, and we'll see what happens. We have great people in there. And again, I want to thank the country of Mexico. Today, they have 27,000 soldiers on our border, and they're doing a fantastic job. They're doing a job that the Democrats should do, and the Democrats won't do it. The do-nothing Democrats, they won't do it. They can't do it. They're incapable, I, I don't know, incompetent or incapable, but they're incapable of doing it because we have loopholes that could be settled out and solved in 15 minutes, and they won't do it. They want open borders, which means crime. They want sanctuary cities, which means crime, and lots of other problems. And it's, I mean, what the Democrats are really, it's disgraceful what's happening. But I just have to say it, I say it again, Mexico today has 27,000 soldiers guarding our border for free. And I very much appreciate it. I really like the president of Mexico. We have a great relationship. And Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador have been terrific. So we have a really great thing going. And the numbers are way down. We have very good numbers on the border. Uh, uh, Spain because of the financial aid to Venezuela. We'll see. We'll see. Sir, on Colonel Vinman, what proof do you have he's a never Trumper, sir? Do you have any proof? Say it. You said that impeachment is holding back the stock market. How high do you think the stock market would be without impeachment? I think without impeachment, the market would be much higher. People don't want to see me. It's not going to happen, by the way. I'll tell you what. First of all, this thing, if they want to pursue it, I can't imagine it taking very long because it's so basic, it's so simple. But if I wanted to, that could take a long time. But I don't want that. I think the stock market has been very much affected. I think the stock market right now would be substantially higher. And one of the reasons it's up 300 points today is that people finally got to see the, the transcribed letter or version of the phone call with the president of Ukraine. And everybody that saw it said, oh, this is good. And the market went up a lot over the last short period of time because they finally got to see it. Most people thought it was the Adam Schiff rendition, which he made up. But when they saw the letter, you look at what's happening with the stock market right now. When they saw that letter, look at what happened to the stock market today. I will say, if anything ever happened, you'd have a crash the likes of which this country has never seen. Thank you, thank you.